So, Miss Eva, now we want to talk about uh, investment itself. It seems like you have a lot of knowledge and finances. Now, there's a lot of people out there, they want to be rich. They want to have money, millionaire, billionaire, quadrillionaire. But you, you seem like the person of reality. You know that everyone say that when you come to Dubai, the first thing you need to do is real estate. Real estate is that market that everyone wants to join because it's easy money and da, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. But maybe you're the type of person, no, it's not as easy as it seems. It's a lot more competitive and you have to Absolutely. be very strategic and very maneuverable to do it. But I don't know anything about real estate. You do. So hopefully you can tell everybody out there the reality of real estate in the UAE. The reality of real estate is exactly as you described it. You're absolutely right. You got it absolutely right. Um, so many like people it. out there, they think, you know, they think it's just, okay, let me join. Just say, anyone can do it. Any taxi driver in Dubai can sell real estate. You know, is it the hard? You just, you just bring people, you know, show them around, show them apartments and just close the deals and make money. But the reality, that's, that's why, for that reason, I think in this industry, you have a lot of people who are just, you know, passing by. So they are not, they're not professionals. They're not here for a long time. They're not committed. Um, and they're not really professional because they don't dedicate their time and efforts to, to, to study and to become one, you know, to become a professional, uh, to, to provide the value. This is what the main idea of, of being a professional in any industry is, first of all, number one, right? It, it's, it's providing the value. And of course, you get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the higher the value you provide, the more you get paid, but not always. So sometimes we, ha we, we call it, we call it a, a new joiner syndrome, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there is such a phenomenon that I observed. Um, sometimes new people, they close deals like in a very short period of time. They just join and like by luck or, or somehow. I think, I think, it's, like, I think it's, it's an open chakra, you know, because they don't have that previous negative experience that is holding them back and these negative beliefs, you know, that you have in your mind that are preventing you from, from, from closing, from, from doing something in a good, good in your industry. So mm. that's probably the issue. So they get very excited on that wave, you know, and then once it comes to the routine, they understand if you don't have skills, then it's not going to work out. So I, I, I learned the hard way, to be honest, because I joined that industry when the market was not very well. Right. Um, I heard from, from, from people in my industry before that, back, let's say, in before, before the crisis, 2008, uh, when, when Dubai real estate was booming, you know, and everybody was like, as I said, every taxi driver was offering properties, you know, and they actually could close because the demand was so tremendous that people were just buying no matter what, no matter where, just, you know, give me, give me a token, you know, <laughs> let me get this property. So, but the time changed and, um, yeah, you have to stand out to be, to be successful because there's so many real estate companies in Dubai. We are basically offering the same things to our clients, you know, so your skills, your expertise, comes to the first place so being active on social media i believe is essential crucial nowadays if you're not on social media i i know a lot of colleagues of mine who are not on social media still like oh they have you know for example account on instagram you open it and you see it just a regular regular another real estate person you know posting the same pictures and videos mm. but i believe you need to invest in it you need to really um, understand how it works what are the algorithms nowadays, they keep, everything keeps changing every day. So you, you, you really have to be updated. Another thing, yeah, number one, constant learning. Um, being able to adjust to the changing environments. Um, you can sell no matter what. Bad market, good market. This is what I understood, you know, because if you start blaming the market, the clients, um, I don't know, your neighbor, <laughs> the luck, whatever, you will never be successful. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Um, um, you know, I believe this kind of experience, every real estate agent, real estate agent who started from, from scratch had. Uh, so first of all, you run after the clients, then you're all over the place. Then at some point, you need to understand that you have to be focused on something. You know, you have to be specialized. And this is what helps you helps you to become an expert in, in one area, let's say, or uh, one type of property or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I, I, learned, I learned many things along the way that helped me, helped me to, be, to be more successful in one oh, area. Oh, okay. 
Well, I mean, okay, so basically, I, I want to ask you this, because since you had all this great explanation, the detail is this. How did the UAE, okay, how, how did COVID-19 affect the UAE real estate companies? Now, you mentioned before there's a lot more competition now. It's not like how it was in 2008 during the booming process. You can just right. sell properties out of the blue, left, right, up, down, especially during the Burj Khalifa con construction. Remember Burj Khalifa Absolutely. was built in 2011, and that's when Dubai became just, it just skyrocketed, the whole image, everything. You had investors all over the world coming here. But there's another And they announced the, the expo, expo that time, I think. Well, it was around 2013, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, when they announced the expo. It was another another big time that, yeah, that period. Correct. Well, it's very volatile market, up and down, true. Well, the thing but about this market Dubai, creates opportunities at the same time. Well, one of the things about Dubai, at least, is that every time when something big happens in Dubai, they always make something bigger. So now they said there's a 2040 <laughs> expo, but that's another time for another day. <laughs> But the thing is this, uh, COVID-19 basically affected uh, the real estate market here, but Expo 2020 is also happening. So do you think Expo 2020 is going to boost the real estate market or not really? What's your honest opinion? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, when it was back in 2017, 18, I believe everybody was trying to finalize something. When we talk about off plan, let's say, off plan projects, um, to finalize something that was going to be completed before the expo because expo was something like wow to expect everybody was uh, speculating on that things you know so probably i can resell and get a great value or the rental prices will be sky high you know that's why the best the best time is to to enter now and you hear people talking about this event anymore you know and everybody understands that it, of course, it is important and it will bring, um, you know, new opportunities, new investments into the country, 100%. Um, I don't think due to restrictions, still so many countries that are under lockdown, um, we will get less people than expected. There was expected around 25 million visitors to, to come to Dubai during the, this six months. Um, it's going to be less. But however, I think people started understanding that there are global cycles, you know, and what we see is actually very ironic because... Uh, I remember many of my investors, especially Europeans, um, when they, the, the lockdown restrictions started all over the world, um, they were saying, like, not going to invest now. That was around, let's say, January, February 2020, just in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, we will wait until September. Because in September, they expected a crash to happen to Dubai and prices to go down by 50%. All of us, we know that it's not going to happen, you know, pe people living here. But for them, from outside perspective, because they saw what's happening in Europe, you know, in, in their country, they, they were projecting, uh, projecting that to Dubai. But it didn't happen. And what we saw was actually the opposite trend. So we can say, like, we had tr many transactions actually happening during the lockdown period because there is a certain um, group of investors who are looking for those opportunities, the smart money, you know, that always enter the market during that, that crisis, that turbulent the turbulent times. Money? That's a new term. And the, the, I, I heard yeah. the smart police. I heard the smart police, SBS. Smart police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smart money buy, always buy properties, yeah, especially during the crisis time. So, yeah, there, there were some distress deals happening, you know. Um, uh, you always have people who want to exit uh, when... Uh, they're afraid to lose even more, you know, and they, they panic and they, um, they, they want to get rid of their assets. And uh, these guys are waiting, for, looking for those deals. Uh, but um, by, let's say, August, September 2020, we saw, I mean, we saw it later, a few months later, but that apparently was the bottom of the market. And mm. then we actually expected kind of a U-shape recovery, but what we saw was, was very surprising because it was sharp, you know, so it was a V-shape recovery. This is what, what's happening till now. You mean yeah, like, so you, you mean like January, a, February? Like, like an ascension? You're talking about like a slump? Like, like exactly. downward or, or upward? That, that, like that, up, upwards. Oh, yeah, upward, it's okay. going up now. Yeah, the trend is going up, definitely. So, um, yeah, the market started growing. For example, some areas like uh, Palm Jumeirah, they appreciated by, by 30% within a few months. Um, I believe it depends on the... Uh, if we talk about the areas that have less supply and, um, you know, they're close to the sea. Obviously, Dubai is all about, about the sea, about the... 
um, tourism, you know, uh, resort lifestyle. So, of course, these kind of properties, they're they're hot piece uh, for international investors, uh, especially. And what we saw, uh, we have a lot of uh, investors from uh, countries like Russia, Kazakhstan, uh, as well as Europeans, Germans, like a lot of Germans. Um, now, relationship is between Israel and 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 UAE is is you know much better. So they we are open to welcome Israelis. That's another factor that of course boosted the sales, boosted the market, um, as well as um, you know relationship between Qatar and UAE now is back back to normal, step by step. So that's another one. Um, of course, now we are waiting for the borders to be open. I believe they already announced that uh, for the Saudi Arabia, you know, these Gulf GCC countries. Right. So these investors will be back. So, so I, I believe within at least the next two years, that trend will continue.